Okay, pop quiz. Would you say this geometry is easily printable on an FDM 3D printer? I don't think that I would, but using the new organic supports from Prusa Slicer, this model was sliced and printed perfectly the very first time. So in this video, I want to talk about how I made this model using ChatGPT and how I think organic supports are a game changer for procedurally generated models like this. I've been seeing a lot of posts of people printing using organic supports, and to be honest, I haven't used them in a couple years, and after watching Uncle Jesse's video where he showed off some pretty impressive prints using organic supports, I decided it was time to revisit the topic. I downloaded the latest alpha build of Prusa Slicer, and sure enough, the organic supports show up right on the splash screen, so it's pretty clear that they're excited about this. The feature works just as well as you would expect, so when you're generating supports, just select organic and you get these very thin organic structures that use less material and take less time to print. In my last video, I was exploring using ChatGPT to directly make 3D models for 3D printing, but I wanted to take it one step further, so I thought, how can I use ChatGPT to generate geometry designed to test organic supports? For an input prompt, I asked ChatGPT to create a Python script that would take an STL file, rotate it a random amount, and then export that STL into the same folder. I've found that ChatGPT works best when you add complexity incrementally. Once the initial script had been generated, I then added steps to rotate along the Y and Z axes. So here's our first Python script. It takes an input.stl file and rotates it along x, y, and z. But you'll notice something interesting here, it's actually rotating the vertices individually. So we'll get back to that in a second. But it saves the file as rotated output.stl. So here's our input file, and here's our output. Not quite what we had in mind. So you can see here it did not rotate the mesh uniformly. So this might have actually been my mistake. I asked it to rotate the mesh, and it rotated parts of the mesh. but. I actually want the entire mesh to rotate as one uniform model. So back to the conversation with ChatGPT. This time I'm going to request that the mesh is uniformly rotated, and because ChatGPT has this contextual memory, it knows what I'm talking about when I say mesh. Here's the modified code, which has the same functionality as the original, but with one little adjustment. This time I've set it to run a set number of times, so it creates multiple outputs. So here we have the code in Python, and you'll see in the folder I have my input.stl as well as the Python script. When I run the Python script, what you'll notice happens is it generates three outputs, and that's because I've asked for three iterations to be ran. So here we get one, two, and three, and if we look at each individual STL file, you'll see they've been rotated randomly. You can adjust the number of iterations by just updating this integer. So I'm using three, but you could also easily update to five. And now when you run the code, it will generate five discrete outputs. So for testing, if you need to make five, 500 or 5,000, it's the same level of complexity. Now we're at the fun part. Let's try and print one of these models straight out of the program without any adjustments to the orientation at all. I'm printing these models out on the Anycubic Cobra Neo. This is an inexpensive 3D printer that Anycubic sent me to test out and make some videos with, and so far I've been pretty impressed. It took about 20 minutes to get it up and running, and as you can see, it printed a fairly complex model without any real issues. I think a lot about first-time success and how that's really important when using a 3D printer. The organic supports allowed me to print this model perfectly on the first try. I'm not sure I would have had that same experience if I had used other supports or other software. We know the organic supports can handle one of these rotated models, but what would happen if I took all three of them and merged them into a single model? So using Blender, that's exactly what I did, and I took these three models and created one manifold mesh. Looking at the model in Prusa Slicer, it just looks like a headache. It's the kind of thing somebody sends you and says, hey, can you print this out real fast? I think it's perfect for 3D printing. And the closer you look at it, the worse it gets. I used the same approach for this model as I did for the first model. I didn't optimize or rotate the model at all, just generated organic supports and hit go. Complex prints like this can sometimes feel almost destined to fail on an FDM printer. I just haven't had a lot of success with really complex support structures, which is why it's so amazing to see this work. The Cobra Neo isn't a particularly expensive 3D printer. You can buy it on Amazon for about $240, and this output is honestly, it's really just blowing my mind. You can clearly see all three benches supported by this organic support structure. I'm definitely impressed with the Prusa Slicer organic supports and plan on using them for more FDM projects in the future. ChatGPT also made my life a little bit easier because I was able to automate some of the work of rotating these models. So it's a lot of upfront work, but now I have this flexible, repeatable code that I can use for other projects. I think this is a really exciting time to be in FDM 3D printing because we're finally at a point where the software is starting to catch up with the hardware. 
So with all that in mind, I'm excited to see what problems I tackle with ChatGPT and organic supports next. If you have any ideas for a future project, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.